Johto Route 40, it's home to one of the most bizarre quirks in the entire series. And I've already said it in uh, the Crystal LP, but I'm gonna repeat it for the benefit of those among you who haven't seen it, which I wouldn't be surprised if it was actually the majority, because when I finished the Crystal LP, I had, what, a thousand subscribers, and now I have over 8,000. So anyway, the thing about this route is that there are four trainers here, and three of them are named Simon, Randall, and Paula. You connecting the dots yet? Three of the trainers on this route are named after the original American Idol judges. Or are they? Well, the answer, Pluck TM, completely useless. Very similar to Aerial Ace, except it trades them. The, the perfect accuracy thing for eating the opponent's berry whenever it has one and absorbing their effect would be sort of cool if the power was higher. I guess 60 just isn't enough to go around anymore. But as I was saying, that is not actually the case. Why? Because the first season of American Idol happened in 2002. Whereas Pokemon Gold and Silver, where the trainer names were the same as in this game, Pokemon Gold and Silver were released on... Uh, I don't remember the exact date, but it was in October 2000 in uh, North America. So what this means is that ha naming those trainers after people from a show that didn't exist yet for two years is absolutely impossible. So, as a result, we have perhaps one of the strangest, creepiest coincidences in all of gaming. I, I'm, and I'm dead serious when I'm saying that. This, this game, and not Hard Gold and Soul Silver, I meant Gold and Silver themselves, they, uh, they came out two years earlier than the first season of, of American Idol. So, there is simply no way that they could have known ahead of time unless they had a time machine or something, which is, once again, rather weird considering Gold and Silver do feature a time machine. But yeah, pretty weird, isn't it? I just thought I'd tell you so <laughs> you, you would know. The world needs to know about this, because this is just plain bizarre. Uh, anyway, a, a few videos ago, someone mentioned in uh, my channel com no, not, not my channel comments, those have been closed down for a while, but in the video comments, and this has nothing to do with American Idol, just so you know, this is a completely different subject, um, that person said that, you know, it's sort of weird that Ampharos doesn't learn Tail Glow, considering, well, uh, uh, the entire purpose of Ampharos is that its tail glows, which explains, you know, why it's used as the light source in the lighthouse. Well, if you were wondering why it doesn't have Tail Glow, the answer is very simple. Tail Glow is actually a mistranslation of uh, the Japanese name for the same attack, which is Firefly Light. Firefly Light! So now you have a better idea why Ampharos doesn't learn Tail Glow, because, well, it's not a Firefly. Obviously, that doesn't explain why Manaphy gets it, but nonetheless, that explains why Ampharos doesn't have it, which is really a shame because uh, if you weren't aware of it yet, uh, Tail Glow was improved in Generation 5. Now it increases special attack by three stages in instead of two. Now it sort of makes sense that they would upgrade such a move that is only obtained by two Pokémon, Smeargle notwithstanding, because, well, Volbeat sucks ass, and Manaphy... Well, Ma Manaphy is an odd case, because uh, t Tail Glow and Hydration are two of the major reasons why it's Uber right now, but would it be not Uber if Tail Glow was only two levels like it was back then? Well, I guess we're never gonna know, because there are no, su there are no suspect tests for what-ifs, though I guess it would be pretty interesting nonetheless. And speaking of mistranslated moves, there's another one that's uh, really important that I, I know people have been wondering of why certain things could learn it while others couldn't. Uh, Sucker Punch has been given to many Pokémon that could not punch, such as Dugtrio, for example. Though Dugtrio also gets Scratch and Slash when it doesn't even have any claws, so... 
<laughs> yeah, Dugtrio is an odd case overall, but there are plenty of other Pokémon that that get Sucker Punch while not having the ability to punch. And uh, something like Hitmonchan, for example, uh, you would expect to uh, be able to learn Sucker Punch because, well, it's the punching wonder and all. Hitmonchan doesn't get it. It's not boosted 20% by Iron Fist either. That's because it's a mistranslation. The Japanese name for that move was Ambush, but it was... Um, it was changed to Sucker Punch because, well, I don't know what they were thinking. One look at uh, the Learn Base would have given them the idea not to call it Sucker Punch. What was wrong with Ambush, anyway? But I guess they wanted to capture the, the deviousness and cheapness of such a move eh, otherwise than just by just using Ambush. I have no idea. I have no freaking clue why the translators thought it would be a good idea to call it Sucker Punch. And while I'm busy coming back on what I said or what other people said in previous videos, there was something I mentioned in the previous video that I want to come back on. I was talking about, you know, the massive difference in stats between uh, Gabite and Garchomp and how uh, a similar case would actually be very relevant as far as my plans for this LP goes. Um, as you're probably aware, it's now very easy to obtain a Larvitar rather early in the game. You can find one in the Safari Zone if you look hard enough. And uh, as a result, you might be thinking that, well, I'm, I'm going to be using Tyranitar in the post-game again. There's no doubt about that. However, uh, the, the, oh wow, by the way, those Whirlpools do look a lot cooler than they did back in... Um, Back in Gold, Silver, Crystal, don't they? They look a lot bigger and more threatening, for one thing. Then again, everything looks a lot bigger than it did in uh, in Gold, Silver, Crystal. Especially Kanto. Yes, I went there. But, as I was saying, I want to use Tyranitar in the post-game, but I, I am going to wait until the post-game, until I do anything with the Larvitar I am going to catch in the Safari Zone. Reason being... I could do one of two things. I could either take on the Elite Four with a Pupitar, which is out of the questions because the stats on that thing are too damn low, or I could grind it in Victory Road on Pokémon that are in their mid-30s. Fuck that! Speaking of which, I'm gonna have to send Gengar back in the lead because Lapras is all out of Thunderbolts. Yeah, 15 Thunderbolts go away quite quickly on Sea Roots, don't they? Fortunately, I have a second user of that move, so it's not nearly as bad. Uh, anyway, maybe you've noticed, maybe not, but uh, we made it out on Route 41, which is a rather large route. And no, I don't mean it's long as in lengthy or whatever. I mean literally, it's a, it's a large route. It's actually sort of square-shaped. The reason for that is because the... I was about to say the Seafoam Islands! The Whirl Islands! Sorry if I said the Seafoam Islands, I would have gotten 50 comments correcting me, even though you know, I know, I would have been talking about the Whirl Islands. But yeah, the Whirl Islands are here, and we need a Whirlpool in, er in order to get inside. You get the Whirlpool HM after the Team Rocket HQ in Mahogany lands gives it to you. And you gain the right to use that HM, I believe, after you've beaten Price. So, uh, by the way, one little thing that's interesting about the Whirlpool HM in this game is that in Generation 2 it was HM06, whereas in this game it's HM05. Reason for that is that in uh, Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, HM05 was Defog. Defog is not back in this game as an HM. Doesn't really matter, doesn't really matter because they're both awful, awful TMs, though I guess Whirlpool is a little bit less bad, I suppose. But yeah, in this game, HM06 is Rock Smash, which actually returns from Diamond, Pearl, Platinum. So instead of putting back a Whirlpool into its old place as HM06 and move Rock Smash to HM05, well, they went the easy way and just replaced Defog with them, with Whirlpool instead of just doing that. And, uh, by the way, something about uh, Rumble 2 that I wanted to talk about, because I thought it was pretty funny when I first saw it, and don't quote me on that, because I'm not 
100% sure on that, but the way uh, things work in the game make me believe that the Regis are actually regular Pokémon, as if they don't have legendary status in the game. And why, why am I saying that? Because a regular Pokémon, uh, as a rule, appear only in certain stages. Uh, they're, they're m m more, more often than not, they're rather common, whereas uh, legendary Pokémon can be obtained in one of two ways. There are those that I mentioned in the last video that you can only obtain by either spending play coins or connecting with a lot of people that have the game, and the other legendaries are, are rare spawns in certain types of areas, and not just uh, that type of area in a certain level. For example, if there uh, if there is a legendary Pokemon that can be found in a cave area, it's going to be found in any cave area throughout the entire game. It's just going to have a very very low appearance rate. The Regis, on the other hand, the way they work is that they, they work like just any other Pokemon, in that you can find them in a specific area of a specific level, or two or three, doesn't really matter, but in the Regis, I'm fairly certain that it's only one area in one level, and I don't know if they're common or not, but I, I do know that they can only be found in the post-game, though, which doesn't really mean much, because there are a lot of other Pokemon that only start appearing in the post-game, and those aren't legendaries. So yeah, I sort of found it weird that the Regis would be demoted like that. I don't know if it's because of their relationship to Reggie Gigas, where Reggie Gigas is, you know, very clearly the, their trio master because they created because it created the Regis out of their respective elements. I don't know. I have no idea. Anyway, Cyanwood City. We finally made it here. So. I'm not going to explore the city quite yet, though I want to finish Route 41 first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heal my Pokémon, and after that I'm going to send Lapras back in the lead, because um, it still needs uh, the levels more than Gengar does at this point. So, okay, I'm just going to change my lead, and after that I'm going to head back out on Route uh, 41. And as for the Whirl Islands, I'm trying to remember what I did in my Crystal LP. Did I do it all at once? Somehow I doubt it. I think what I did... Yeah, I think what I did was that I went to uh, the Seafoam Islands as soon as I got the Whirlpool HM so that I could uh, get all the items that were, that were inside as well as get some experience, which I guess uh, wouldn't be a bad idea because Claire... Well... Uh, <laughs> I remember back in Crystal, I sort of feared Claire and her King Draw because I didn't have any and didn't have any sort of dragon moves to use on her, and that's still going to be the case in this LP. So I still got to be careful, though, about uh, that King Draw. So I guess coming here would not be that bad, except for the fact that in Crystal, I could only get Lugia once I reached the Pewter City. And it would still be the case if I uh, played Hard Gold, but this is Soul Silver, and I'm gonna have to come back to the Whirl Islands anyway uh, when I'm gonna have uh, beaten Claire and been completely done uh, with Johto. So, um, what am I gonna do? I think I think I'm gonna do the first uh, visit through the Whirl Islands as soon as I'm done with the Rocket HQ and Mahogany, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna make a rush for. Uh, Lugia when I need to come back after beating the Kimono Girls. And a quick look at the clock tells me I don't have the time to beat that trainer that was swimming just to the right of the screen. So uh, I'm going to call it quits for today, so next time we're going to hopefully complete Route 41, and then we're going to explore Cyanwood City, and hopefully get the secret potion while we're there.